uh, because we're now moving on to the second panel. We're closer to the coffee, but this panel is going to be amazing. So I want this panel and afterwards a bit of rock and roll with some startups. But this second panel of the afternoon is about bringing value to the health insurance industry, as Elena is doing. And it's going to be moderated by Pascal Lardier. So uh, if you want to join us uh, and all the participants, you can present, introduce them so that they can join us also in the, in the panel. Thank you very much, Pascal. Thank you. And maybe you can introduce, we can introduce the, the rest of the, of yes. the... I think we're missing Omar. Yeah. Najid, CEO and co-founder of DocLine. And also Pedro Diaz Juste, the CEO of Savia. So first of all, thank you very much, Elena, for um, a great, inspiring um, presentation. I think it's, uh, it's really encouraging to see this kind of um, activity initiatives uh, in the insurance uh, industry. Maybe we can spend uh, a few time with you, uh, Omar and Pedro, uh, just introducing yourselves um, and uh, telling us what services you offer and how you leverage digital health. We start with you, Pedro, maybe? Okay, thank you. Uh, well, I'm, I'm really happy to be, to be with all of you here today in this uh, great event of uh, Barcelona Health Hub. <laughs> thank you for inviting me. Um, Savia is a digital platform for health services. We are 100% owned by uh, MAFRE, the leading insurance insurer in Spain. And uh, what we try to do is anticipate what are going to be the customer needs uh, in the present and in the future in order to build a more innovative and customer-centric uh, health insurance solution. But Savia, we have begun with, with Savia, and Savia is not a health insurance. We are services, two kinds of services. First of all, uh, health from your mobile. You can contact uh, through chat, through video consultation uh, with real doctors at the other side. You can also have a symptom checker. Uh, you can uh, upload uh, your personal health information. You can receive uh, uh, medicine prescriptions and so on and so on, all from your mobile. And the second is that we run a marketplace where you can buy medical services in a pay-per-use model. For example, you can buy a physical visit to a, uh, to a pediatrician in the big and, most, and more important Spanish hospitals, and you pay it in a pay-per-use basis. You pay in the platform of Sabia, and then you enjoy, uh, uh, you enjoy the, the visit there. And the same with uh, a lot of uh, medical acts regarding uh, test, diagnosis, uh, uh, medical images, and whatever. So uh, all of this platform is uh, completely built from the customer perspective. Uh, we rely a lot in data. Uh, we, we used to say that in a health business like Savia, the data is the blood of our business. And uh, we are a platform that is really strong in integration. Every one of the digital health solutions that we provide to the user are not being developed by ourselves, are being developed by different health tech uh, companies uh, most of them from Spain, but also for, but, 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 uh, but uh, we have uh, some ones that are not Spaniards, but uh, we are really, uh, ha uh, we're really lucky that here in Spain, as specifically in Barcelona, thanks to Barcelona Health Hub, we have a, a strong ecosystem of health tech companies that are really focused in giving a good user experience, customer experience, and uh, what we usually do is that if we think that we can easily integrate their value proposition into Savia, we offer to the market and incorporate them to the market. Uh, there are some uh, 
uh, health tech companies hosted here in Barcelona Health Hub that they will have integrated, like is the case of Medictor, for example, or uh, other companies, for example, Docline is a health tech uh, we work with, uh, and uh, this integration uh, ecosystem gives us the possibility to be really fast, really quick, providing to the user, to our customers, the best solution uh, in a timely basis. That's great. Thank you. Um, Omar, a few words about Doplan. Yeah, thank you very much. First, first of all, uh, congratulations, uh, Barcelona Health Hub uh, team and uh, Luis Padrenas uh, for organizing, all the team for organizing this, this, this event. I think it's the, the, the fifth, the fourth, the fourth year. So you, you start as a startup and now you are like a scale up. No, we were going to talk about startups and scale ups and collaboration with corporates. So congrats, congratulations. Uh, Docline, it's a digital health uh, solutions uh, company, a B2B uh, company. Uh, we do uh, two things. From one part, we help our uh, our uh, clients, uh, mainly called corporate clients, with the tech solutions. We have uh, an all-in-one platform, uh, telemedicine platform, with the technology of video consultation, chat, uh, e-prescription, integrated in Spain with 23,000 pharmacies, and more than 15 features in. Um, and uh, one platform, and uh, and with the with the API uh, product to uh, allow our clients to implement all this technology and their existing uh, apps and platforms. That was that what uh, Pedro say said before. This is from one part, and from the other part, uh, listening to our clients and collaborating with our clients. We realize that as uh, the one of the one of the, the most important challenges is to uh, convince uh, doctors to do telemedicine. So uh, we decide to start offering as well virtual care services thanks to our uh, medical network. Uh, we have a medical network of three thousand uh, healthcare professionals. More than uh, more than 25, uh, 25 uh, specialities, and we help our clients uh, to, uh, um, uh, to, uh, to to uh, to solve their their their, their problems. Uh, for example, in the insurance uh, sector, uh, we have the problem of uh, of, of in, in healthcare sector in general, we have the problem of uh, of waiting lists. So we, we help them, uh, provide them uh, spe specific uh, solutions uh, thanks to our uh, medical uh, network. So telemedicine platform tech, as a tech provider and uh, uh, sometimes the platform plus doctors because this is what the market uh, is asking for. And how many years have you been operating? Seven years, uh, and it has been an, an amazing experience with, uh, with a lot of challenges. Uh, we, um, we spent the, the first three, four years working with uh, SMBs and with doctors, uh, small consultations, um, because uh, we decided to um, to learn from doctors and from uh, uh, from the early adopters and from small clinics, uh, how they want to use uh, telemedicine, different uh, pains, etc. Test and learn, and then when when we um, when we uh, we get this network, we start. Um, we start offering our service to uh, big hospitals. For example, in Spain, one of our clients is Vitas, which is the, the second largest group of hospitals here in Spain, with, uh, with uh, more than 20 hospitals and 
20 or 22 medical centers. Uh, so that, that was the, 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 the next steps to, uh, to help group of hospitals. And, uh, and the, 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 the third one uh, was starting to, um, to collaborate with insurance company and to uh, insurance company uh, facilitating this technology and facilitating um, the medical network, digital medical network, not any medical n network. Thank you. Well, I was um, a little uh, surprised when I read the uh, description of this um, session. And I realize now that it's mainly because I'm not an expert on the Spanish market. And maybe there is a specificity here that makes things happen. And in other place, it doesn't happen. I was, uh, for instance, uh, talking to the head of global partnership at one of the big five. Um, French company. Um, she was telling me that over five years she signed 50 NDAs that led to zero pilots. <laughs> zero pilots. And she quit. Um, and at, I think at some point they had chosen someone to work with. It had taken two years to get there. Um, but then the team changed. And they decided that they didn't want to have a, a, a European uh, center of operations. So I'd like to, um, to focus a little bit of that, of that uh, sequence about what is the best way uh, to collaborate. Um, Elena, you, 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 you made a call at the end of your presentation. You said, we're open. So first of all, are there any specific solution you're looking for? Because maybe someone in the room is has, has the one, um, but what, what is the best way to collaborate with Adeslas? I'm saying our experience, it's, uh, and I think our experience may be not just to Pedro's one or to Omar or to any other company, but I will say what we did and wh what we have done. Um, we decided in the beginning to, uh, to build something, right? So. Um, our solution is, is um, we, we made that because we decided we, uh, we, we didn't find at that time um, the perfect partner to do that, right? So um, I think we, we made uh, the main uh, platform, what is in the basis of Salud Bienestar, we uh, did that on, on our own in-house, yeah? Um, and that uh, um, means lots of work, I think, and uh, lots of expertise. And we did it with a, a multidisciplinary group because we have technicians, but we have doctors, uh, everyone taking care of that product in, a, in an agile way. Um, but we think that right now the ecosystem or the market is um, uh, developing so quickly that uh, is faster, as Pedro said, sometimes to, um, to integrate solutions that are specific uh, and that can uh, give us a quickness in, implement in, in implementing them and um, uh, scalability as well, because we need that, right? And let us um, test things, test concepts as well, right? So. We, uh, as I said before, we now are open to collaborate because I think that the market allows that much better than in the past. Is it a little bit of the uh, COVID effect also that accelerated? Yeah, I think that the, uh, yeah, the, the COVID has accelerated the adoption of digital health and has um, made uh, people be more, uh, well, le less afraid than, it, uh, than, than patients and doctors were. Uh, about digital health, because I think that the resistance was in both parts of the of the story, right? So digitals were not uh, the clients were not very fond of, but doctors less than that, I think. So I think that the pandemic has uh, put the the challenge to the society, and everyone has test, uh, has tested that the uh, advantages are huge, and that we can do things. So. What, in my opinion, what uh, we have to do right now is maybe to um, 
to rethink about this uh, adoption to make that a more uh, resolutive, maybe. Uh, this is my opinion. Pedro, you're obviously um, open for collaborations. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, our experience was the Mafre, of course, is a really traditional company. Uh, so we decided to build this, uh, let's say, like a split uh, with Savia for uh, digital health and working mainly uh, with uh, the way of uh, working of a startup, but with a big difference, a great difference, is that uh, I earn my payroll every month. So it's different than the, than the, the, the usual startup, no? Uh, but we have found that the uh, collaboration between corporates and startups is not easy. It's, it's hard to do. But we have found a magic recipe with three ingredients that if you follow them, you are able to do that. We, was able, we were able to integrate 10 different health tech startups in less than one year and a half to build the main value proposition of Savia when we launched them. And these three ingredients are, first of all, happification. I mean, Omar was telling about before, I don't want to work with any company that is not happified because I need integrations that are easy, that are cheap, that uh, you can put in the market really, really quick. We have had uh, experiences with the startups that I told them, I love your solution. I think it's a winning solution, but you are not appified. So go for appification, and when you are ready, then come to me, and we won't talk again, okay? Second, win-win uh, proposition. I mean, I'm a big company, I'm a corporate, I used to have a lot of money, but I don't want to pay uh, a fixed amount of money to you in order to integrate with me. If the integration is easy, I will pay to you, but not very much. Let's say, uh, <laughs> Omar is laughing. Uh, let's say 5,000 euros, 10,000 euros, no more, because the integration is easy. And then we put the solution in the market, and the user, my user, my customer, will decide if your solution, it pays or not. If it pays, then we will grow together, okay? And the third, that for me perhaps is the most important, and it's not a question of uh, the companies, it's a question of the people, is that the, I, I call it um, bidirectional humility. You need to be humble. Both sides have to be humble. The corporate, uh, we have to be humble enough to recognize that these two guys in their garage are able to build a solution that is so customer-centric that it's really bringing a lot of value to my customers. And to be humble enough to recognize that I'm not able to do it by myself. The traditional way of thinking is, is whoa, uh, I'm, I'm going to build this with my IT team with 5,000 people and uh, it, will be, it will work better than this uh, startup solution. When you think about it, uh, it's, it's a lie. Don't lie yourself. You are not going to do it. Never, never. Because it's true that you are a big company, you have a, a lot of good capabilities, but we are not prepared for this. So you have to be humble enough to recognize that this uh, small company, small startup is going to give you a lot of value. But uh, this humility is bidirectional. I mean, you need also uh, humility in the startup side. I mean, uh, I have a lot of conversation with uh, founders of a startup that says, well, I'm here to change the world, and I'm not able, to, uh, and I'm not going to change my mind in order to give you satisfaction. And uh, well, it's true that to change the world, it's amazing. But if you are able to change, uh, uh, if you are able to help a big company like Mafre to change, to succeed in this new digital world, well, I think that this is also changing the world. So, 
if you put the ice at the same level and you build this relationship being humble at the two sides, then things could work. And this has been our experience. Elena, I, I can see you nodding. You recognize these three ingredients yeah. as essential? Yeah. For, uh, I would add other things as well. I would say that for us it's really important that these startups or those solutions that may be um, in the market um, evidence patient results. Right? For us this is really important. Uh, we are very focused on getting value and value in health is health outcomes. So that's a really important part of, uh, for us. Would you help the startups build their evidence or would you I would ask for evidence first. First. Yeah. Okay. And then we will test if this evidence is uh, also happening in our um, portfolio of clients. Yeah. But first of all, bring me evidence. Yeah. Um, the other <laughs> thing is, uh, as, as Pedro said, the customer experience. This is really important uh, for us because it has to be uh, engaging for clients. They have to evidence also recurrence on the use of that. The clients must love that, yeah? Uh, and that, uh, that's important for us. Other thing is, is the proposal of the startup aligned with our, uh, our aim, our pr uh, value proposal as well, or not? <laughs> which, uh, which is going to be the the revenue for, for us, what's going to be the return in terms of loyalty, in terms of uh, efficiency, in terms of what, right? Win-win, uh, yeah. right? Yeah. A yeah. win for you, a win for the startup, yeah. and a win for the members. Yeah. And two other things. The ability to execute, important that one. So we have three million, more than three million people, three million and a half <laughs> uh, cl uh, customers, right? So for us, it's really important how they execute and how to scale. And maybe in technology, this is more or less um, um, easy to solve. But when it, that involves human resources, scaling is not that easy. So it's important for us that point also. And the other thing, the, the final thing is, um, in terms of technical issues, for example, security, privacy, all those things are important for us. So um, we understand that really there are two worlds, right? Yeah. The startups, the insurance um, mm -hmm. uh, companies, it's different space time, um, mm -hmm. it seems uh, sometimes. So let's, um, let's ask Omar um, about his vision from the other side. Um, based on seven years, I think, um, at, uh, with DocLine, um, what would you say were the key factors of your success and what, um, uh, more generally, the, the success factor of a collaboration between a startup and a large corporation? I think it's, uh, it's, about, the, it's about the stage. Of, of, of your company, of your startup in this case. If you, have, if you are an early, early stage uh, company, um, you, uh, you have to think about your strategy. You're not going to work with a corporate uh, or insurance company in this case in your first year or even in your second year. And you have to um, build and validate something before so who did you build your your evidence with where did you start in our in our um, in our experience and i'm very proud to, sh to share it with, with with people and with the um, with the audience in this case me and roberto the the, the, the medina the co-founder our medical director we visit personally more than 400 doctors we uh, and, and we are based in Malaga. We did it in Malaga. We did it in Barcelona. Uh, we did it in, uh, in Madrid, in Seville, etc., in big cities. And uh, we interviewed them to understand how uh, we can help them with uh, this software as a service uh, solution. 
and um, it was very, very, very important to build this um, network to test and learn to have uh, evidences that uh, Elena uh, said. Um, and were you already appified, or did Pedro make you <laughs> do that? That's a very, that's a very good, good question. To be honest, uh, in this case, uh, Savia uh, and Mafre was uh, was the first clients that make a lot of pressure on on us to uh, to do it, and uh, and we uh, we 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 learn. Uh, a lot, and we, we we were able to 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 do it. It was a big challenge, uh, and also from uh, Savia say uh, from Savia's side, um, uh, they uh, decide to uh, to take some 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 risks to to do it with with a, with a startup uh, like Dockline. Before Savia, we. Uh, we was working with other two insurance companies, but we didn't work on, on an implementation project. We didn't work in an in integrations project, etc. So, uh, if you are in an early stage, uh, maybe uh, people from innovation in an in, in insurance company, they can uh, help you to run some pilots as quick as possible sometimes they have uh, some budget some small budget to uh, to do it uh, and uh, you will not be ready to talk with people like uh, elena for example because uh, they they expect um, scalability uh, security robust solution uh, evidences etc and um, if you uh, if you are a scale up, um, I mean, one of the most important um, and key factors uh, in this case is uh, to be very flexible as a company to help your clients uh, without changing your roadmap of product and your vision but you should be very flexible to help your clients to work on different use cases. So your technology, uh, as uh, Pedro and Elena say, should be a uh, modular technology, should be an API technology, because maybe uh, for, for, for a specific uh, project, they need only 20% uh, uh, of your solution, and they don't need all your solution. So um, that's a very important uh, modularity. In other words, yeah, exactly. That's that's that. It's about modularity, and um, and that 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 in my in my uh, in my opinion, it's um, it's a key uh, it's a key factor, and to build a very good relationship with the C level with the company. Because you will always have challenges. Uh, it's not very easy. It's very complicated. And this word is very com of, 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 of technology and for changing the way that your uh, clients, in this case, um, 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 doctors, uh, clinics, hospitals, patients, you are changing the way uh, of, uh, of uh, consuming uh, um, services so it's 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 very it's very complicated and you as a, as i say before you will always have challenges so you need uh, a lot of transparency with um, with your clients with insurance company and you need to build this relationship with the c level uh, of uh, of 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 the insurance uh, company in this case I think I've been organizing conferences of digital health since 2008. Um, and I think modularity is, is one of the great signs that we've seen of maturity, really. Um, because at, at the beginning, everybody wanted to be the one-stop shop mm -hmm. um, yeah. of um, digital health, thinking that they could do everything. Yeah. But it's really 
much smarter to do one thing well rather than try to really uh, make things complicated. I want to talk a little bit about the, the actual challenges um, of these relationships. And maybe we can start again with you, um, Omar. What, what were the biggest challenges you've, you've had to enter this world? Because um. once you're in, you're in, right? Yeah. Um, one of the things that insurers usually ask is similar um, uh, uh, solution in a similar setting or in a similar implementation in a similar setting. Mm -hmm. So it's the chicken and the egg. Um, <laughs> we, under <laughs> we understand that. Um, what would you say were the biggest challenge you've had to overcome? In, um, in our case, um, you, um, a company like Talkline in this sector, uh, you can't you can build just uh, MVPs and, and, and lean startup and stuff like this, because as Elena said, we, uh, we, uh, it, it, this sector is very compliance. Uh, data, it's very uh, sensitive, we are, G we are GDPR, etc. So we have to invest in, uh, in our security and our technology, and especially if we have the vision to scale the company and um, to uh, collaborate and to work with the uh, corporates, you need to build a, a, a scalable and robust uh, product. And that means money and time. So, uh, of course, you need this very good relationship with your clients, but before that, you need a very good investors that they have to understand that you will need time to do it. You need to invest in uh, your uh, solution. You need to bring the best talent to your company, and it's uh, it's, uh, it's resources, it's money. You're not going to bring the, 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 the best talent uh, just uh, sharing this, uh, <laughs> this uh, hype of, uh, of startups and sharing uh, um, stuff like this. So you need to invest in your people um, and you need the right investors in, in, this, in this journey. So uh, that's one of the most important uh, challenges uh, in, 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 our, in our case. Back to you, uh, Elena uh, and Pedro. I wanted to know to what extent nowadays there is a pool from your members or your customers. I'm actually in the market for um, an insurance, a private insurance company. Um, and I know that for me, um, the digital solutions that are offered are very important, but I've been in this business forever. So, of course, I'm looking at that. But do you feel like more and more the, the population is thinking, oh, this is interesting because they have an e-prescription system um, or they have a, a video consult or... Um, I think so because uh, I think that we all uh, will agree that uh, population has liquid expectations, let's say. And whatever is happening in other uh, sectors um, in consuming, uh, for buying, for example, or for your relationship with your bank, or for booking your holidays, you, everything is digital right now. And why not healthcare? So I think this is really important for people right now. And after the pandemic, much more than that, because people has, uh, get used to this kind of transactions and this kind of, of uh, operating. And they want to be in control. They want to be an active agent, as I said before. So I think this um, kind of platforms, this kind of solutions uh, are really demanded by people right now. Do you agree? Fully agree. Fully agree with, with Elena. Uh, I think that the user, uh, our customer, is just prepared for this. I mean, uh, the penetration of the uh, internet from your mobile is uh, 100%. Uh, my mother, 80 years, 80 years old, uh, is used to WhatsApp, and 
if she is not able to use her health insurance from their mobile, it's not their fault. It's my fault. So I, I think that we as a companies have to work really hard with this because this is not a question of age. This is a question of convenience. Convenience means that, okay, telemedicine, digital health solutions are not for everybody all the time. But if you can avoid a physical visit with uh, no decrease of the uh, quality of the medical attention, and uh, for example, you only want to solve some doubt that you have, you can do it with video consultation. You need an online prescription that the doctor thinks that it's a good idea, you can do it online. To have a follow-up consultation after a first physical visit is a good solution because you are saving time and you are maintaining the quality of the medical attention. So I think that the user is prepared for this. And uh, moreover, I will say that... Uh, how do we deal specifically with the elderly cohort? How do, we, how do we bring them there? How did you bring your grandmother to WhatsApp? <laughs> Ah, well, it was uh, really easy. If we're talking about WhatsApp, I mean, well, my, my mom is a traditional mom. Uh, all, their business, all her business is her family, her three sons, and all the, all the, all the family. And uh, when the relationship of all the family is happening in WhatsApp, when we share photos, messages, uh, the appointment for the, uh, for the f uh, Sunday lunch, is happening in WhatsApp, for her, WhatsApp is mandatory. So now, uh, the most uh, uh, heavy user of WhatsApp in my family, of course, is my man. <laughs> and I, I have to say, for example, for her, uh, well, I have five children. Most of them are uh, teenagers, and they uh, are really bored with the Sunday lunch with the grandmother. But they are really uh, eager to use uh, technology. So my mother has discovered that having a relationship with my teenagers, my, my children, are WhatsApp. So he WhatsApp with them every day, and she is happier after uh, the lunch of WhatsApp. So, well, for me, this is a good example of uh, I'm a digital optimistic. I think that the technology if we use in a good way, it's is, is, is going to, to, to provide to us a better world. And uh, it's because of my mom, and it's also in health. And it's resp our responsibility, of, especially of the big companies like Adeslas, of like Mafre, to push this hard, to provide these solutions coming from health tech, uh, put at the hands of our customers in order to, to make a better world. I think our time is up, but I want to congratulate um, the three of you uh, on setting up a, a, a really successful business and on you know, being leaders um, of the insurance world in digital health. Um, I think this is very inspiring and deserves a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pascal. Thank you very much to all of you.